To the surprise of absolutely no one, small crossovers are big business. After helping establish the segment back in the late 1990s, Honda brought out the subcompact HRV for the 2016 model year, helping backfill some of the space left behind by the ever expanding Honda CRV. Well, now there's a 2023 HRV, and as you can see, it replaces its comparatively tiny, fit based predecessor with a much larger, more mature offering that takes its bones from the Honda Civic. Before we go too much further though, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. Now, back to the HRV. In spite of its newfound exterior size, the new HRV isn't substantially bigger inside than the vehicle it replaces, whose clever packaging put the fuel tank underneath the front seat to leave more space in back for passengers and cargo. The HRV also loses its predecessor's flip up magic seat, which was really handy if you needed to carry some vertical cargo, like a ficus plant or a television or something like that. It's also a little bit smaller in terms of rear seat, passenger head, and legroom, so what gives? Well, what the HRV loses in packaging efficiency, it more than makes up with a mature, refined style, confident driving experience, and an interior that, in spite of those unusual tweaks of the measuring tape, is still as large or larger than most of its competitive set, including the Toyota Corolla Cross, Mazda CX-30, Kia Seltos, and Hyundai Kona. And it's also a great value, especially in this fully loaded EXL all-wheel drive model I'm standing next to right here. Obviously, none of that's readily apparent the first time you see an HRV driving down the road. In contrast to the polarizing Hyundai Kona and the graceful Mazda CX-30, Honda's entry-level crossover plays it safe with rounded contours and a slightly drooping nose and tail. There are some clever additions, like this rear door handle that has been relocated from the pillar for an easier reach for little hands, but overall, the old car's froggy, fun-loving stance is gone. This vehicle looks like it was designed by accountants and actuaries. But even if the outside is dull, at least the HRV's cabin shines bright. This could be one of the most maturely designed and user-friendly interiors for less than $30,000. As on the Civic, there's a really cool full-width panel that hides the HVAC vents underneath some really cool mid-century mesh. But otherwise, the HRV has a flavor all its own. There's lots of rounded shapes and bulging contours, my favorite of which is this shift binnacle that kind of looks like a sport bike's gas tank to me. Behind that, there's some open storage that has a USB outlet for both the driver and the front passenger. And then even further back, the huge center console lid opens up to a nice deep cubby, giving you plenty of room to keep your stuff organized and within an easy reach. And in spite of the dearly departed magic seat, the rear bench now folds completely flat, which sounds like a novelty until it's time to load it down with some big stuff. Compared to the bland and cheap filling Corolla Cross, the HRV feels far more mature and user friendly. The HRV also has a huge leg up on its competitors, technologically speaking. The base LX and mid level sport models get a 7 inch touchscreen that's good enough for most, while my EXL tester has a 9 incher that's sure to satisfy, particularly since it comes standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. A 7 inch LCD in the instrument cluster handles the speedometer and trip computer, while there's an analog tachometer on the other side. And Honda's infotainment system is one of the easiest to use in the entire segment, save perhaps the Hyundai Kona and Kia Seltos. Oddly, navigation isn't available here, but that's what smartphone mirroring is for. While the old HRV was actually pretty fun to drive thanks to that lightweight, flingable fit construction underneath, it exacted a bit of a comfort penalty thanks to a slightly archaic live rear axle, whether you got the all wheel drive or the front wheel drive version. The new HRV has no such problems thanks to a multi link rear axle, no matter what you pick, as well as a McPherson strut front suspension. That also puts it above other compact crossovers in the class, many of which use solid beam type rear axles on the all wheel drive models. And it definitely drives with much more authority than I ever remember an HRV driving. It's comfortable, it's pretty quiet. It doesn't feel like it's getting blown around by crosswinds. It doesn't feel tinny or cheap. It's just a much more mature driving experience. With only 158 horsepower coming from that two liter four cylinder under the hood, you definitely have to flog the HRV to get it up a mountain grade like this one. The CVT is pretty well behaved and it handles the engine without creating too much thrashiness, which is really nice in this class of car and it's definitely much better than the Corolla Cross in that respect. But I don't totally understand why they didn't offer the 1.5 liter turbo in the HRV like they did with the Civic. 
After all, if Hyundai can create a business case for the Kona N-Line and its sharp 195 horsepower turbocharged 1.6 liter, I don't totally understand why Honda doesn't do the same with its 200 horsepower 1.5. HRV SI anyone? Of course, driving verb probably isn't super important to most crossover shoppers, so to appease the left-brained, every HRV gets the entire Honda Sensing suite of active safety features standard. That means automatic emergency braking, lane departure prevention and lane centering, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow and traffic jam assistance, and more. To that long list, my flagship EXL tester adds front and rear parking sensors, low speed collision avoidance, and blind spot assistance. It all works pretty well, not quite as good as Hyundai's HDA driver assistance technology, but it still keeps the car in the lane lines pretty well and adds a healthy dose of confidence in heavy traffic. The other major consideration to customers shopping in this class of car is price. The base Honda HRV LX front wheel drive starts at $24,895 with destination. That's definitely more money than the Kia Seltos, Hyundai Kona, Mazda CX-30, or Toyota Corolla Cross at their starting prices. Adding to the frustration is the fact that the HRV gets worse fuel economy than its predecessor and most other vehicles in this segment. 30 combined with front wheel drive or 27 combined with all wheel drive. That's kind of a bummer. But if you step away from the bargain basement and into something with a few more features, it definitely feels like you're getting a lot of car for the money. This EXL all wheel drive tester, with its loan option being a beautiful coat of paint, is $30,590 with destination. That's a few hundred bones less than any of its competitors, comparably equipped, and it feels like you're getting a real car in the process. While it might not be the nippy urban runabout it once was, the 2023 HRV is still a darn useful vehicle, offering newfound levels of good manners in a class heretofore known primarily for frugality and cheapness. Personally, I might skew a little bit more toward the boosted Mazda CX-30 Turbo, Kia Seltos SX, or Hyundai Kona N-Line, but everyone else will find a whole lot to love in the 2023 Honda HRV. As always, thanks for watching.